Yes. Exactly. And now after a very, very short break, we'll be going live with sound healer uh, Sagar Dogani. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the Love and Dubai show. The use of sound as a tool for healing has been around for thousands of years, but it's rising in popularity as we focus more on our well-being and sense of purpose. Today, we're joined by Sagar Dugani, a sound and movements practitioner, to tell us all about it. Welcome to the show, Sagar. Thank, <laughs> yes, thank you so you. much for joining us. Yes, thank you. Thank you for inviting. Hello. Welcome. So gra- uh, glad to have you on the show. But first, I want to ask, you about you if you can introduce yourself because yeah. it says on your instagram that you were you know first into mba and you were into yeah. uh got into a- analysis and being yes. a data anal- yeah. analyst yeah. and now you got into sound healing how did yeah. that happen uh, so i did my uh, mba in economics and then human resource and then marketing and then there was a goal so whenever we get into a job we have a goal of like This is the salary I want to reach and after this I'm going to be happy and all of that which uh, I've been told by the family But then when I reached that salary after six years, I was like, okay, something is missing. And then I took it forward for another three years. And then I was like, okay, I'm done. I need to do something um, which I have not been told before. And I do not even know what it is and how to do it. So I took three years of break. And um, then I planned a little bit of financials on how to do, what to do. And uh, I told myself that what I'll be doing if there is no money ever given, for any things I do and that is how I started choosing my practices and I was into movements um, which led me to like the first thing was like okay I can be an instructor I can be a fit- fitness intru- instructor I can uh, talk about uh, body and how to be fit this was my thing but then I went into uh, spondylitis which is um, where your spine goes this and six months I was in bed rest so no job no money i didn't know what i was going to do that is when i was introduced to this instrument which is called as didgeridoo which is a breath and a sound instrument and i was told that um, this you can heal yourself uh, and this happened in goa i was working in bangalore but i left and uh, moved to goa and when i started playing i started realizing that i can see uh, muscles from the inside And uh, instead of six months time, I was able to heal in two and a half months. And that led my interest to like, what is sound? What is breath? And then the research went on. And uh, I started seeing like, because I was analyst for uh, 11 years. uh, So I was disconnected with that part of my life. I was like, uh, I wasted my life. I'm already 30 years old. And how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to compete with other practitioners who are already teaching for so long. And uh, as soon as I got into the sound healing practice, uh, it started showing me that I am the one who has been disconnected from my life and I can take the learnings from that. And as soon as I said this, I started analyzing myself. I was like, okay, I'm the product, I'm the service. There is no one uh, to submit this report. So I was making my report in a certain way, not lying to myself and uh, trying to be truthful. I thought it is easy to be truthful to self, but uh, when I started questioning, It led me into a certain journey where I was like, oh, I've been lying to myself for very long. And uh, that took me into like accepting the complete past. And as soon as I did this, I was like, oh, any practice I can choose. I just have to give time. And um, in three months, you can keep switching your practice. So I got myself into uh, fire stuff. I got myself into animal movements. I got myself into contact dance. and uh, didgeridoo and then like another 10 instruments i play more than 10 instruments as well and uh, then i was like i started into vlogging as well i was like okay uh, how much time does it take so if i want to achieve something in three months i have to give three hours in a day which i'll be giving like 900 hours in three months but if i give make it six and if i make it nine so in 15 days time i'm giving 100 hours so that's how i like share, started sharing the practices as well I was like, this is what I want to teach to people. And three years, I was doing everything on donation um, in India, which is called a seva, because once you get into a certain modality, uh, the practice makes you do the things in a certain way. And then I was like, okay, if because I was done with all the money in two years, uh, because I was doing it in a certain way. And then I was like, okay, if I do not have money, I won't be able to take this practice forward. So then I switched. Then I was like, where do I want to go next? Then Dubai happened six months back. 
and actually when i came to dubai you guys were the first one to offer me a ticket to uh, a football match no way yes <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes so even before coming to dubai i started analyzing and i was like what do i want to do i started getting in touch with uh, certain venues who are into wellness and then that's how i started following your page also and uh, yeah amazing yes. uh, obviously we're going to talk a lot about sound healing but before we get there i just want to uh, pinpoint one thing that you said which was um you know you were doing mbas and you were following probably a path that was laid out by yeah. society or your parents and then you took the step to move away from that yeah. and i think a lot of people watching would have the same we have expectations on us to follow yeah. a certain path so yeah. how was that and was it challenging to move away from what society expects from you it was very intense in the beginning um, um like i was constantly asking myself this question like why was i working um why did i study because i never wanted to study i always wanted to dance but i had been like a very shy dancer because my dad never allowed me to uh, go into a certain practice he was okay to pay my college fees and tuition fees but when it came to dance classes you are like no i am not paying this amount mm-hmm. and when as a kid you have this like okay what do i do now um my journey has been intense uh, in terms of uh, the childhood uh, in terms of mom dad it's like a complicated family indian family but my dad is a cop uh, and i tried to commit suicide also uh, before turning 20 so that is what led me into this journey of uh, okay i i don't know what is life and why i am living in the first place so i started asking certain intense questions to myself like okay if i die today what am i taking with me and then it made me more intense uh, saying that if i do not do what i like then there is no point to it so i was led into uh, sound healing through different shamans i received like uh, more than 50 sessions for myself so i went into my own trauma healing journey and i saw that uh, that this practice has certain um, importance or uh, it is very mystical in nature i was like i was not able to talk to myself i didn't even know there is a part called a subconscious which exists in us because i didn't believe in god neither karma because my question was like if something this intense can happen to a child i cannot explain that god exists in a way uh, so through this journey i went into certain mystical dimensions where it showed me why, what karma is what is your life why do you come and why you are born into a certain family and after that my research started going more deeper into it it's like okay this is very interesting so i want to study what is sound so then i got into like okay what is physical what is non physical what is mystical dimension so everything was tough but uh, how do you say it is like perspective so until unless you start doing it uh, it is a step by step process yeah. so i was like constantly analyzing i was like why i was doing and how much time did it take me to do what i was doing because uh, in corporate also like how uh, do we do this is when we get into a project for example new project to learn it it takes 3 months yeah to master it it takes another month and in the fifth month you are like subject matter expert on it yeah. and then okay it's yours so with any practice you choose it is just that you wake up with the thought of the practice you sleep with the thought of the practice you talk with the practice and uh, it becomes easier so what exactly is sound healing like we know it's about vibrations and the yeah. right metals um forming those vibrations to heal your muscles heal your inner self but what exactly is it uh, so it is a um, very interesting modality so it works in three aspects one is physical and one is non physical and the third one is mystical which i will take you guys through it's very interesting so physical is like um, we have blood we have bones we have different organs which has different density yeah so when we play certain instruments what happens is uh, because of the vibration um, so if any metal is vibrating if you place some object on it what happens it falls off yeah our body is also such so this vibrations ke- create infinite patterns in the body so when the infinite patterns are created you become aware of the vibrations in your body so when you become aware there is a disconnect you can see yourself as if you are seeing in a mirror but this time it is not the mirror this is actually yourself so you can go very deep into any physical pain and uh, you can go to the source of the pain and what do i mean by source is um if there's a pain here in this joint 
I think that okay, the pain is coming from here and my focus is here. But this can be originated from the back, from your neck or even from your knee. So you can reach to the specific source of the pain and then you can ask the question like, okay, where did this pain come from? And it will take you to that specific incident when this pain had occurred or when you were a kid and you fell on your knee and you don't even remember how it happened. And now if you take away all the sounds, uh, I'm talking, yes, so there is a certain vibration in this one. So if I speak with anger, there is a certain vibration in the body. And we do not understand like in the m m macro and micro aspect, how does it interact? So if I talk with peace or with joy or with kindness uh, in the essence of it, my whole body vibrates in a certain way. So if I speak with anger, you will see that my whole body is like shrinking and my face is changing and that affects in the micro aspect of the body. So if you take away the sounds, your sound healing is your own voice and your voice is the most powerful voice for you because what you speak you hear and changes the cell patterns. Now even if you remove this, there is a heartbeat which is like constant. We are born with this and we do not understand why she is beating in the first place. How did, it, how did she come and where she came from? So your heart is creating the infinite patterns how is because the density is different of every muscle already so your blood vibrates in a very different way your skin vibrates in a very different way your bones vibrate in a very different way so if you just focus on your heartbeat you can get to the essence of these emotions and now there is non-physical part so non-physical part is like infinite memories what we hold and uh, it doesn't have a data limit it is unlimited so we keep gathering all the information and all the memory. So when I ask myself like what is anger, I do not even know what it means because I've been taught about it. I've read on, in a book or I've been told by my parents. So every emotion goes in this way. So in your non-physical, you can actually ask these questions of like what is the essence of kindness? What is anger? Um, why am I holding so many things which have been held? Because how we suffer is because of the past and the future. The present is beautiful, like I'm sitting, I'm breathing, I've had my food, you know, so all is cool. But uh, we take so much pressure for the things which do not exist and that happens in the non-physical. So when you become aware of the physical aspect and the non-physical aspect, the mystical dimension opens up, which is completely logical. Um, but you can base your understanding from the logical aspect. Like when I say illogical is you can ask the question of like, what is sound? What is fire? What is water? What is my body? How am I seeing and how am I able to perceive whatever I'm seeing? You can ask these questions and you can get to the source of these questions and the answers become like very interesting. So my questions were like, what is life? What is blood? And what is sound? So when I asked what is sound, through logical aspect, it takes you through uh, the line of the sound. Like even before I'm born, um, because I asked this, what is karma and what is sound? And so before I've been born, I'm in my mother's womb for nine months. So I take all of her emotions, all of her thoughts, just through her heartbeat and the sound of her breath. Because if her heartbeat would have stopped, I wouldn't have been born. Yeah. So even before I'm born, I'm coming with so much data and I don't even know like where the data is coming from. So I can go to her mom and then I can go to her mom, then I can go to her mom. Through logically, I can go to a certain length and then you stop because you do not know. Then you can go beyond that in your mystical dimension. You're like, okay, where did the original heartbeat, where did it start? So if it has started from a certain line of the life, so the information what I carry, it's huge, it's infinite. And that is why it is so intense uh, for us to go through all of the emotions because we do not understand where they come from. And we can do it in a logical sense, um, but it has its limitations. So how I do this and how I teach also is like when you ask the question about the kindness or the anger, instead of why, if we focus like, okay, I want to become kindness, I do not understand what it means, but I want to, can you show me? And your heartbeat, because it has a certain kind of information, you'll be led into the mystical dimension.
So I want to ask, like with sound healing, right? Like you went into so many different aspects. If you're saying that it can, you know, like tap into the subconscious, yeah. in a way, can it also uh, cure insomnia, Alzheimer's, physical yeah. pain, mental pain? Is there a way for sound healing to do all of that? Um, I work with pretty interesting uh, people because in India, I did sound healing session to more than 3,000 people. And uh, I've been in Dubai since five months. I've been working with um, a place called Estoda. A theater of digital art so they have like 60 people in every session so i've worked uh, more than 1500 people in dubai already so through this i've worked with uh, people with uh, anxiety with depression and the people who have problems with sleeping so to understand this we have to understand like what is anxiety and um, this changes from person to person like for me if a coffee mug is there and if it is not here uh, it can cause anxiety yeah. but for the other person his life can cause a very different kind of anxiety right mm -hmm. so it makes you reach to the source of that creation of uh, why did this anxiety start in the first place where it came from because the vibrations become so intense and uh, why the facilitator is also important in this journey is because we are the instrument which has this emotions and thoughts which are interacting with the instruments which do not have anything. Mm. They have the vibrations already. Yeah. Mm. So when I hold the singing ball and if there is a robot hitting it, so just the singing ball's vibration will go. But when I'm holding the stick, so there is a heartbeat, there is full vibration in my body, I'm hitting. If I hit with anger, the anger is mixing with this vibration and that is what is being sent. So when I work with these people, what are the three emotions I send is like uh, kindness, clarity and strength and through the essence of kindness, clarity and strength. So this also came through a lot of research of uh, which are the emotions which works for any kind of person going through anything in their life. It might be the job, it might be the family, it might be his own future predictions or the past or uh, the present confusion. When you add, like it's very interesting when you do this in your mind right now also, that any question you have, if you tell yourself that I want to be kind, I want to have the clarity. So when you have, when you become kindness and clarity, the only thing that comes from your mind is truth. Because you really want the clarity. Yeah. And when you add the kindness, other than truth, there is nothing else in yourself. Yeah. And to be able to speak truth to yourself, you need a lot of strength. And so I created a triangle. I was like, okay, kindness, clarity, and strength. So you can create this loop. And it is not about um, being this to the other people. It is about you being kind, you having the clarity, and you having the strength towards yourself. And the rest of the people just become byproduct of that practice. It's a, it sounds amazing and it's it's a whole new world to me. I would love yeah. for you, I would love to be a part of that right now and for the audience too as well, yes. if possible. Yeah. You've brought two didgeridoos. Didgeridoos, yes. Um, tell us, what, what are we going to do today? Uh, okay, I can uh, talk about this one very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, Australian Aboriginal instrument. And this is one of the first instrument known to humans. That's why she has that uh, essence of the healing. She was born in a forest. Um, so the first how she was born is she was born out of fire so there was fire in the jungle and people were blowing the fire to make it larger but the fire became larger and the skin started burning mm. so they took a bamboo and they just started like blowing through the bamboo and there was a first sound so this was the first sound a human heard other than his voice and then they went into the mystical dimension of the reality so in just two to three minutes, you'll be able to feel like, what is this instrument? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to do some sound healing with Sagar Dugani on the show. Yes, you can close your eyes. Okay. Okay. Zoom in on Sagar. Uh, take a deep breath in. Let's make sure Instagram can see you. Okay. Hello, people. <laughs> yes. Close yes. eyes? Okay. Yeah, keep your eyes closed. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And out. Thank <laughs> you. 
I keep doing the sessions regularly at my house. Yes. Well, that's a lot of breath work from your side as well, right? Yes, it is called a circular breathing. Mm. Uh, so the first time I played this instrument was uh, for eight hours straight because I've been very adamant in my non-physical and with my practices. Mm. Uh, so when I get into something, unless and until I learn and master it to an extent where I can talk about it and I can take it forward to the other people, I do not stop. So that's how I go. So from my understanding from this interview, and thank you for the information, is that sound healing, uh, you can send, for example, kindness, clarity and strength yeah. through the instruments. Yeah. to how, So we don't have to have the full understanding of the knowledge of what you shared on the show today, which is obviously a lot deeper, yeah. but we can go and still reap the benefits yes. from... the instruments that you're playing. That's amazing. Yes. And that was a beautiful session. Like, I feel like this sound is just going to stay with me the whole day. But we <laughs> want to play a quick game with you, Hi. if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So we'll just go into like sound healing fads and what people, you know, think of it. So basically, we're going to give you some scenarios. Okay. If it's like, you know, if you don't think it's correct, if you don't think that's true, inaccurate, you press the buzzer. Yeah. Okay. We're just going to ruin the beautiful sound we just had with this awful, awful noise. <laughs> that is our buzzer. This is cute. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Cute. I've got a lovely space. Okay, go. Okay, so we'll start with the first one. Sound healing is just a new age. Uh, let's say it's a new age. Trend? Trend, yeah. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Can I talk about it? Yeah, of course. Yes. Uh, sound is a source of creation um, as we speak because uh, in the scientific way also if you go, uh, they say that it was created out of a big bang, the whole world, the mm. cosmos. Yeah. And um, yeah, through the logical aspect, when you go, your logic takes you through a little bit forward. Uh, the source of my being, if I remove the complete universe and just focus on this one, Because uh, in the yogi culture, we say that the whole universe is here. So you need not study anything which is outside. You just study yourself. Uh, what I mean by this is like, if I ask, um, how is my heart functioning? Why is my lung functioning? Yes, so every essence in the body has the sound. So it is, um, if I just ask this, like, okay, my heart is here. So I want to know. how you're beating. So it comes from that kind of uh, ancient life uh, that since the time we have been born, it exists. And it only ends when we die in the physical essence. But uh, in the scientific essence also, if you go, that energy cannot be created, neither it can be destroyed. So it just transforms its form. So if we ask this question like, okay, we are energy beings. So what happens after the body? because body is just 60 to 80 years, mm. but energy exists. So the question becomes open. 
of like, okay, how long I've been existing? Is this my first life? Is this going to be my last life? Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Okay, we have time for two more. Yeah. Sound healing can actually affect the cells and physiology of the body. Oh yeah, this is true. Uh, because it affects everything. It's physical, non-physical and the mystical. So since the cells are the physical essence, So when I play this instrument, you could feel the vibration, right? So if you take out this one and you just sleep today and you ask this yourself that I want to listen to my heartbeat because it is crazy for me when I ask this question like my heart is beating but I'm still not able to hear why mm. because there's so much sound from the outside. Yeah. So when you sleep and you can try this also today that if there is any physical pain, you just tell yourself that I want to connect my heartbeat to that specific point of the pain. And if this is the pain, if you touch here, you will feel the vibration of the heartbeat here because she is not just here, your entire body is beating. So this cell can heal itself by your command because your voice, your sound is the most powerful sound for you irrespective of like whatever sounds exist on the outside. Okay. Last one. Yeah. Uh, sound healing can cure insomnia. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So um, uh, the that's the non-physical aspect of mm. it, right? Uh, which comes into the physical. Why is insomnia? Is because there is so many thoughts which are constantly running in the mind, and uh, we think that we cannot stop the mi- mind. But what happens when you exhaust all your thoughts? Um, Like if you bring out all your thoughts in a book, yes, you if you make it as a booklet, you'll see like, um, okay, it's 100 pages, probably 200 or 300. And if you go one by one, step by step, there will for sure come a point that you have answered everything. It can be blank. But uh, what happens in the mind is we keep the question on repeat. The same question is being played. It's like a loop, yeah, because it's existing. And we feel that, oh, okay, you can keep going because you do not have any impact. But the physical and the non-physical, it is not above or below, important or less important. Both have the same value. So in your non-physical, when you get to a point of like, okay, I do not want to have any thoughts. And it is so simple that uh, because all of my practice are like, how do I make it simple? for mm-hmm. people to understand. How do I talk to the person who doesn't know about sound healing? Mm-hmm. How do I talk to a kid? How do I talk to a doctor? Us. Even yes. today on the show, it's a new yeah. to a lot of us, yeah. Yeah. So it's simple that um, in your thoughts, how to say no to the thoughts is by saying no. So any thought which is coming to you, like say no. And if you say no thousand times, then you'll be like, you'll search for the thoughts. You're mm. like, okay, where are you? Mm. So to cure insomnia is this, practice insomnia curing insomnia becomes like byproduct of you dealing with your thoughts in a certain way so interesting that was amazing if, so much so information much. if people <laughs> would like to learn more if they would like to maybe uh, attend one of your sessions yeah. how can they do that so i'm present on instagram yes um, my handle i think you guys have already given thank you so much <laughs> yes and i keep doing home sessions i keep doing private sessions also uh, there is something called as ancestors healing which i do And um, I work with different kind of uh, people in curing the insomnia, depression, anxiety, and the physical ailments, and going deep into the mystical reality because uh, sound healing, because it has been portrayed in a certain way that people only connect it to um, healing, but that is the first step. So we heal the physical and the non-physical, and then there is mystical dimension. And so you can connect to me. So interesting that I think that two or three minute session we had on the show, it felt very powerful. I really enjoyed it. So thank, thank you so much for bringing that to us this morning. Okay, thank you, thank so, you so much. much. You guys are welcome as well. Thank you yes. so much. <laughs> we will be there. Guys, yes. kicking one day off with an amazing note. That was Sagar Dugani, uh, a sound and movements practitioner. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. And that is all we have time for this mor- on the show this morning. We'll be back soon tomorrow morning sometime. So please, goodbye. Bye. <laughs>